Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice rational equation. We have 2x plus 1 divided by x plus 2 equals x cubed. And we're going to be solving for x values. Are there any solutions? You could probably do a little bit of guess and check, but we need to make sure we find all the solutions. I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. For my first method, I will do what is obvious, cross multiply, and then solve the resulting equation. So we are going to multiply x cubed by x plus 2, x to the fourth if you distribute x cubed here. And when you multiply by x cubed here, you know, it's just going to be, I mean, 1 over x cubed. Anyways, you get the idea. We multiply these two things, x to the fourth plus 2x cubed equals the numerator, which is 2x plus 1. Okay. In other words, I'm multiplying the top and the bottom by x cubed. Okay. Now, this gives us a quartic equation, but we don't have x squared. This kind of looks factorable, doesn't it? Let's go ahead and put everything on the same side and try to factor it. Maybe we're going to be able to find a common factor. Let's take the x cubed out. That's going to give us x plus 2. But with the minus sign, this will be 2x plus 1. If only these two were the same, right? Unfortunately, that's not the case. And you can tell from here it's not going to work, but at least we tried. So factoring by grouping is not going to work. We have to do something else. Another thing that you can do is if there's any rational solutions, then you can try the rational root theorem. I'm not going to get into that. I'm just going to show you if you can. Well, actually, why not? We can try that. So if there are any rational solutions, you can actually go ahead and find them from the constant term. What divides negative one? Think about it. Only one and negative one. There are two possibilities. So there aren't that many. And of course, this is monic, which means the coefficient of x to the fourth is one. So I don't need to worry about factors of the leading coefficient. If I had something like this and then dot, 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 negative one at the end, then we would have to worry about plus minus one divided by the factors of three, which is plus minus one and plus minus three. So this would give us more possibilities like one third or negative one third right? So that would be a different story. But in this case, it's pretty simple. All we have to do is check these two numbers. And how do you check them? You just plug them in, right? Okay, let's go ahead and plug them in. And we can kind of test it out. You can actually easily do that. So I'm going to leave it for you as an exercise. But I, I'd like to show you something. We can go ahead and get rid of the x cubed. Okay. So let me go back to the original problem. I want to replace x with something like y minus, and here's how we determine it. Look at the sign. It's a plus sign. So you use the opposite. You use a different variable here. And then you take the coefficient of x cubed and divide it by the degree. So in this case, that will be 2 fourths, right? And this translates into y minus 1 half. So you're just going to replace x with that. And what this is going to do is let me show you. This is basically substitution. You're changing the variable. And of course, when you solve for y at the end, you're going to go back and back substitute for x. So if you expand this, you remember the formula, we get y to the fourth power minus four times y cubed multiplied by one half plus y, six y squared multiplied by one fourth, which is y ha one half squared minus four y multiplied by one half cubed, which is one eighth. And then finally, plus 1 over 16, which is 1 half to the fourth power. And then the rest is fairly easy. By the way, this should be a cube. So we got to continue with 2 times. I usually cube it like this, minus 3 halves y multiplied by y minus 1 half. There's a formula that I use. And then this will just be 2y plus 1 minus 1 equals 0. So you can go ahead and simplify this. Well, one thing that's going to happen here when you do that is this will give you 3 halves of y squared, and this will give you negative 3 halves of y squared, okay? So we'll get rid of the quadratic, uh, I mean the cubic term. Wait, wait a minute. Maybe we're getting rid of both at the same time. Who knows? But uh, another thing that's going to happen is normally you're supposed to get rid of y cubed because this is 2y cubed and this is negative 2y cubed. You see that? So, But in this case, I guess y squared also disappears. Even these two constants, they cancel out. A lot of cancellation, this will become a 2. 
So you can kind of write it as follows. y to the fourth, don't worry about y cubed because it's going to cancel out. Don't worry about y squared. It is going to cancel out. What do we end up with? We only have y and a constant. And the y, we need to find the coefficient of y here. I have a negative one half. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's a four eighths. Yeah, exactly. That's one half of y from there. And then what else do I get? This will become three fourths multiplied by this will become three halves. And that's a positive, right? Plus three halves of y. And then finally, I get the constant. So this is one over 16. And then I do get a minus one over 16. Are you serious? Everything cancels out, leaving us with something super duper nice. Okay, great. So this is equal to zero. If I didn't make any mistakes, hopefully I didn't, I usually do. But this should give you y to the fourth plus one y. Notice that three minus one is two equals zero. And then you can basically factor out a y here. That would give you y cubed plus one equals zero. Well, this is one of the easiest <laughs> cortex that I end up with after this substitution. Of course, there's a good reason behind it. But from here, you get y equals zero and y equals negative one. Of course, if you're looking for uh, real solutions. If you're looking for complex solutions, then consider all cube roots of negative one, and then you will find all of them, okay? Now, we need to back substitute for x, x and y. How are they related? I forgot. Okay, x is y minus one half. So from here, x is going to be y minus one half, so x should be negative one half. You know what? We probably made a mistake somewhere because I don't think these questions, these answers are right. But anyways, you get the idea and I don't know why I got it wrong. I probably made a mistake somewhere here, simplifying. But you get the idea because the second method is my goal. I wanted to show you. And maybe you can find my mistake. And by the way, I didn't make a mistake on purpose, but this would probably be a good lesson uh, to explore. So second method, uh, we're going to kind of uh, do the same thing here, distribute, but proceed a little differently, okay? x to the fourth plus 2x cubed equals 2x plus 1. So there is definitely a really nice way to solve quartic equations. The method that I showed you is not the best one, but it still works in most cases, right? The goal is here to keep the x to the fourth and x cubed together because we have an x cubed. If we didn't, then we, would, we, were, we wouldn't worry about it. And I want to add something to both sides to make the left-hand side a perfect square. And if I can also change the right-hand side to a perfect square, even with one step or two steps, that would be awesome. So what I need to add is this is x squared squared. This is 2 times x squared times x. So it's kind of like a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So what I need is x squared. Make sense? And that'll give me a perfect square. So I'm going to add x squared to both sides. I'm going to add x squared here and x squared here. Then this expression becomes x squared plus x quantity squared. And guess what? The right hand side also becomes a perfect square, which is very nice. Doesn't happen all the time because this is basically x plus one squared. That's actually the whole idea behind this problem, but I just wanted to give you in a rational form. So there's a little bit more steps, you know. Now you can definitely solve this in so many ways, but one method would be square root both sides and just set them equal to each other. And this, of course, you also have to consider the opposite right, because of the absolute value. Here we get x squared equals 1, which gives you x equals plus minus 1. Here we get x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 0, which is x plus 1 quantity squared equals 0, which is x equals negative 1, okay? There's definitely a couple different ways to go about it, but this is one of them. Another method could be, and obviously we got two solutions, but you don't need this because it's just repeating this, and then another approach for this type of problem could be the following. Because x squared plus x is factorable, we can actually go ahead and take advantage of that. So write this as x times x minus 1 and square each one separately. And then now you can go ahead and put this on the left and factor out a common factor. You'll get the following. And from here, you'll get the same thing. Because notice that this is from difference of two squares can be factored. And actually, the whole idea here is we have x plus 1 to the third, so roots are repeated. Negative 1 is repeated. That's a triple root. That's why 
we only have two solutions and those are the only solutions we have, okay? All right. Now, let me go ahead and show you some results from Wolfram Alpha. Ta-da! Here's a graph. You're probably familiar with the graph of y equals x cubed, right? Which is something that goes like this. And the other one is a rational function and they happen to intersect at two points, negative one and one. And those are going to be the only, only, only solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and also don't forget to watch A plus BI where I do complex problems. Bye-bye.